Okay, so I'm back in San Diego. I just got here about, I don't know, maybe 10 days ago. Uh, came came from Portland. It was a long fucking flight. I had a layover in L.A. Uh, the flight was delayed. Now, I'm kind of, I'm not scared to fly because I'm in the air and not scared like that. Uh, but I'm claustrophobic, so I don't like flying because I don't like the bullshit of having to like sit next to the fat guy and the screaming kid you know so well needless to say to settle my nerves I you know had I showed up to the airport drunk and I had acquired a Xanax mmm good stuff I love my, my benzos but yeah pop pop so then the flight's delayed so then I'm sitting at the bar because there ain't shit to do at the fucking airport right except for get drunk so I was sitting there buying fucking nine dollar beers, you know. And uh, <laughs> needless to say, <clears throat> I was lit. Now every good story starts off with that. I was drunk. Well, yeah, I was. Got into San Diego. Uh, I had my, <laughs> uh, my my little brother uh, uh, had his uh, girlfriend pick me up. Or his wife, I'm sorry. Uh, had his wife pick me up. Uh, because my mom is totally dangerous driving and uh yeah anyway got got to, got home to, to see the mom and uh <laughs> well the mom was like let's go to the gay bar she's like okay we live in a gay community in san diego called hillcrest and uh we go there and mind you i mean i'm fucking exhausted i had slept like three hours had a xanax on the flight the lady i guess the hostess liked me the flight stewardess, whatever you call those chicks, uh, she came by and asked me, like, what would you like to drink, sir? And, like, threw a fucking thing of, like, you know, honey roasted peanuts in my fucking crotch. I'm like, yeah, I'll take, uh, a Stella, which is a beer, and a shot of, uh, wild turkey. And, you know, you're supposed to pay for that shit. But she came back and gave it to me, and I tried to give her my credit card. And she's just like, nah, don't worry about it, don't worry about it. Well, because of the layover and shit, she ended up coming back, like, th seriously, like three times. And every time, she just handed me a Stella and a shot of wild turkey because she knew what I wanted. That's what I wanted. And, uh, yeah, so needless to say, I was fucked up when I got to the airport. I got even more fucked up on the plane. I thought that Xanax would knock me out so I could just sleep through the whole fucking ordeal. Because, again, I don't like flying. And, uh... Uh, well, no, I didn't. I didn't sleep. And then when I got into San Diego, hooked up with the mom, and the mom took me to the gay bar. We're drinking at the gay bar. You know, we're doing vodka tonics. My mom loves vodka tonics. And I'm just like, I don't even care. Like, I'm a fucking gutter mouth. You give me something, I'll drink it. Well, she's drinking vodka tonics, and I'm drinking vodka tonics, and I'm already fucking three sheets to the wind. Like, this guy... I mean, you would think at a gay bar there wouldn't be any fucking problems, right? Because gay guys are usually not aggressive. They're usually pretty fucking cool. Well, this guy, I don't know if he was gay or not. And it wouldn't have mattered either way because he was just disrespectful. He kept, you know, I haven't seen my mom for a couple years. And I'm trying to talk to my mom. And this guy's coming up and he's like touching her hair and shit. Now, I'm not one of those guys that's like, you know, really possessive. Like, oh, don't fuck with my mom. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm not like that. My mom is an evil motherfucker if she wants to be. She can totally handle herself. Even though she's 65 and she's in a wheelchair, she can handle herself. She'll put you fucking in, in your place. So I'm just sitting back, you know. Uh, the guy's just annoying because I, I'm trying to have a conversation with my mother and he's like touching her hair and shit, putting her arm around her. He's like totally like interrupting me, running into our conversations. And you know, I and my mom, and several times politely told him like, "Hey, this is my son. I'm having a conversation. Will you like go away?" In a polite way, that's what she was saying to him. And he was ignoring her. And I said something to him. After three times, my mom said something to him. I finally said something to him. It's like, look, dude, I just got into town. I'm hanging out with my mom. You know, uh, can you give us a little privacy? You know, we want to, you know, catch up on things. And he totally ignored me. And then he, like, mocked me. Like, he put his arm around my mom and he grabbed my mom's boob. 
and that was it. Like, you know, I mean, again, my mom could handle herself. It wasn't, it wasn't like, you know, a macho thing. I was just pissed. Now that he's just dis disrespecting me, he's already disrespected my mom. Now he's disrespecting me. So I stood up and I grabbed the guy by the neck and I carried him uh, outside the bar uh, pretty forcefully. He tried to hit me in the head with a glass, but even if he, he missed, but even if he would have, it, I got a huge fucking head. Uh, it would have just pissed me off more. I pulled him outside. He was fighting and kicking and trying to bite me and shit, so I punched him in the face a few times, and then I got tackled. The security tackled me. His friends at the bar, I guess he's a regular, tackled me too. I basically had three guys holding me down. And, <laughs> and so, I, at this point, I kind of blocked out. Like, I don't know why, but well, probably because I was wasted. But uh, I, I don't remember the cops coming, but apparently they did. And they didn't take me to the drunk tank. They took me to, uh, what do they call it, like a sober living house. And it was really weird. You guys remember that movie, like um, that zombie movie, like 28 Days Later or something like that? It was like that, man. I woke up in this bed in a room. And I was like, the fuck am I? And I opened the door. And there's this fat black lady. And she's like, good morning. And I was like, hi, where am I? And she told me. I said, what am I doing here? She's like, female officer brought you here. I was like, what happened? She's like, she said something about a bar fight. I was like, oh, shit. I kind of remember that. She's like, yeah. They pretty much carried you in here. I was like, oh, fuck. I was that fucked up, huh? She's like, yeah. She's like, well, you're standing and you're talking. So, uh, you know, here's your shit. And get the fuck out. I was like, okay. Well, here's the thing. is, I was in downtown San Diego... I didn't know how to get home because I didn't know the address. So I'm like basically standing out there. It's like 3 o'clock in the morning. The buses aren't running. Even if they were running, I got no fucking idea where the fuck I am or where I need to go. So I have no, like, no money. I got a credit card, but good luck trying to find a fucking pay phone. Like I left my cell phone uh, at home, so like I couldn't even call my mom. Like I had a card. I had my mom's number on it. And... I'm walking up to people and being like, hey, man, do you mind if I borrow your cell phone for a second? And they're like, oh, no, 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 fuck off. I was like, oh, okay. And I couldn't find a fucking pay phone, man. There's no fucking pay phones anymore. So I come across this group of homeless people. It's just a group of them. There's like fucking 10 of them, you know, and I guess they huddle together for safety, you know, whatever. And I just basically, I was cold as fuck, man. I didn't have my jacket and shit. And so I was like, oh. You know, and uh, I asked one of this, this this old black guy. I was like, hey, man. He had a stack of blankets in his sleeping bag. And so I'm like, hey, can, can I can I use one of your blankets, man? Because I was just going to fucking sleep. Sleep there and worry about it when the buses started running. And he's like, yeah, you have a blanket. And then, you know, we were, like, laying there like fucking sardines, man. Like a pack of hot dogs, do, 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 shoulder to shoulder, fucking sleeping, you know. And I so don't belong here. Like, I'm not homeless. I got a place to go. I just don't know how to get back to it. <laughs> and then they start passing around a thing of vodka. And so I was like, oh, fuck it. Let's do this. I'm going to drink some more. Uh, eventually, I walked back to the, uh, the sober living place. And I, she wouldn't let me in. But I passed my mom's card through the door. I was like, please call my mom. And then she called. My mom gave the address. And then the taxi came. And I paid the taxi guy with my credit card. And yeah. But yeah. Welcome back to California. Fucking A. Fucking A. But you know what? I would do it again in a second. You don't fucking disrespect me or my, my loved ones like that. You know? And I, I am fortunate, though. No charges got pressed. Uh... I didn't even go to jail. The cops just fucking kicked me out in there. And that was it. Like, you know, a, a lot. I'm missing pieces of the story because I was fucked up. But, yeah, I mean, I, I'm fortunate. No charges got pressed. So, eh, here we are, back in California. Anybody in San Diego, hit me up. Uh, send it to satanicinternationalnetwork at gmail.com.